Okay, so welcome to our lesson on how to make a translation tessellation. And we have here MC Escher's famous Pegasus uh, tessellation, where you can see the white horse slides to be the black horse. The black horse could slide this way to be a white horse. Horses can slide diagonal, left, right, up, down. Would you believe that this tessellation actually started out as this tessellation? Now we know that squares, uh, hexagons, and triangles are the only regular polygons that tessellate, but this square tessellation is how M.C. Escher began this horse tessellation. And let me, let me prove it to you here. I'm going to take those squares and I'm going to overlay them right on top of this horse tessellation there. Do you see how the square goes from the, the black horse's jaw to the white horse's jaw down to the black horse's jaw over to the white horse's jaw. This square became this flying horse and I'm going to show you how that worked. So here we go. Escher started out with this red square and what he did is he made basically a squiggle that went from one vertex squiggling all the way around to the other vertex. And since this is going to be a translation tessellation, a slide tessellation, he took that squiggle and he slid it up to the top side. So basically we have this now. Here's the squiggle from vertex to vertex and that squiggle slid straight up. And you can start to see the head of the horse taking shape along the neck, the back, and a wing. And down below, this neck, back, and wing forms the hoof. Now, coming over to here, he made a very elaborate squiggle on the left side. Notice how he starts at the vertex, squiggles all the way down to the other vertex, forming the chest and the front two hooves. Guess what he does with that squiggle? He slides it to the fourth side, forming that. And so you can see that the squiggle that forms the, the, the neck, the chest, and the front two hooves gets slid to the back, forming the wing and the back and the tail and the back hoof. And then all he had to do was color it in. And now watch, you can take that horse, you can slide it down and it fits perfectly. You could take that horse and you can slide it across and it fits perfectly in with the other horse. Well, that looks great, but how do you do it? So let's make a tessellation now. We'll make a translation tessellation right now and see how that's done. First thing we're gonna do is we start out with the shape we know tessellates, and so I just chose a square, and I'm gonna just make a squiggle that goes from one vertex to the other vertex, just like that. And now what I want to do is I want to take that squiggle and I want to translate it straight down here. Well, to do that, I'm going to get a piece of this patty paper, which we've used before in class. And I'm simply going to take a pencil, and a pencil is really important here, and I'm going to just copy that squiggle right there from vertex to vertex and slide it down. Now, my goal is I have to transfer this squiggle to the paper beneath. And how do I do that? Well, it'd be nice if this was carbon paper because I could just push on it and it would leave a little imprint below, but it's not. But I'm gonna make my own carbon paper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip that patty paper over and I'm gonna just transfer as much pencil lead, or really graphite, to the bottom of this as I can, just like this, just transferring pencil lead to the bottom of that squiggle. And I'm going to take it back and line it up vertex to vertex. And now when I push really hard, tracing my curve, I get an imprint left behind. And I can just go ahead and trace over that vertex to vertex. And now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Maybe, I, maybe I'll just make a loop in, out, and down. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just take this, this paper and I'm gonna go from vertex to vertex, tracing over, tracing over. And then I'm gonna color the underside of this curve, 
Just put a bunch of pencil lead underneath. And then I'll go back. I'll line it up. I'll translate it straight across. And now when I copy this curve, going vertex to vertex, I can see exactly what it looks like. And now all you have to do is you can cut this, this curvy shape out from your paper and trace it on another sheet over and over again. And you know that this will be a translation tessellation. And all you have to do is say, well, what's this thing look like? I don't know. Maybe this is, maybe this is a, uh, a fish. And okay, I see my camera person is laughing at me, but you know how this works. And that is how you make a translation tessellation.